All right. Hey, everybody. I've got John Hammond with me from Huntress. And of course, the topic that we're talking about is Microsoft Exchange and the zero day vulnerability is being actively exploited. It's been a crazy week. John, you're running on like pure adrenaline and fumes at this point. You guys have been up for days now. You started a Reddit thread uh, all over this from the get go, constantly updating with uh, the things that you're finding. Um, how are you doing? How are you hanging in there? Yeah, thanks, Jonathan. I'm I'm, I'm doing all right. Uh, we are kind of running on fumes. You, I was kidding with you earlier. Where I've got my energy drink here, just keeping me up to date. But uh, no, we're staying busy. We're trying to update uh, indicators of compromise. We're trying to produce a, a webinar that we're going to be kind of going live with this afternoon at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so we're just trying to educate the community and spread the awareness. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to include a link to that Reddit thread because you guys have done an amazing job, including what you said, IOCs, also just updates of what you found on your end. Um, and it's really been through the night, you were calling partners at 2 a.m. Uh, to help them figure this stuff out. And we've seen a lot of questions going around. And at this point, I think it's safe to say that a lot of people have taken initial steps. There's some tools out there that people have shared around scanning to, to discover uh, vulnerable servers. Uh, there's, there's patches from Microsoft, but there's a lot of questions around, okay, if I have found, found IOCs, what do I do now? Do you have any suggestions for kind of what you've seen, first of all, with those IOCs and then mitigation steps? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the immediate obvious is patch. Uh, once you've done that, actually, if you could validate your patch, that's kind of the next step we're telling folks. Uh, Kevin Beaumont has put out a great NMAP scripting engine, uh, just utility you can use with NMAP to externally validate and make sure, hey, you are no longer vulnerable. And after that, do your typical necessary kind of restoration response. Uh, restore your Exchange server if you can to prior the first known incident. Uh, review your domain kind of users and computers. Make sure there aren't any changes or any modifications. New administrators in the Exchange groups, that is critical. And change all those domain passwords. We say that all the time, but you just have to rinse and repeat, flush things out, and then monitor for these IOCs. Stay up to date with the threat intelligence. And if you happen to see anything new, if you happen to see, oh, I've got a different web shell that uses a different argument, or I see a different IP address being communicated. Yes, we realize that's horrible and bad, uh, but please, please, please tell the community, tell the rest of us so we can kind of continue the hunt because that's what we're all about. Yeah, you guys have been such great contributors to the community doing this. Um, uh, taking the lead and really sharing a lot of this information. Is there anything new in that regard that you're seeing in terms of um, IOCs or new activity now that the cat's kind of out of the bag? Yeah, absolutely. We, so we've been fighting this for as much as we can, right? Uh, when we're sharing this information, it is nice and wonderful to kind of see some others, hey, trust and Huntress. So as we're seeing new partners and new individuals kind of get to know our dashboard, uh, our inventory of exchange servers is going up. So over this past day, we've seen like a, an addition of a thousand new exchange servers. So that brings our number up to what, 3000 or so. And the number of compromises also goes up. Now we're up to about 300 or so. And we're keeping tabs of, okay, what versions are out there? How many have patched? I think we have about 900 out of that 3,000 pool. Uh, but wow. it's incredible to see the statistics. It's incredible to see the data. Uh, but it goes to show that this threat is still out there. The infected hosts are still being infected. Uh, the attackers are scanning the internet. And this hasn't come to an end just yet. To that point, uh, going back quickly to Microsoft's announcement, they stressed that this was, at least when they announced, a limited targeted uh, exploitation that they were seeing. And of course, now your, your findings kind of indicate that maybe this is a little bit more broader. I mean, you're seeing a variety of victims here. It seems like this is kind of indiscriminate. Maybe not early on, but at least at this point. I tend to agree. Uh, truthfully, we that mention from Microsoft is, hey, this is limited and targeted attacks. Truthfully, we, we, we disagree. We're seeing this at a bit of a larger scale uh, between the whole gamut, right? This is all across the board, ice cream shops, small hotels, the mom and pop shop down the corner, all the way up to government, city and county government organizations, financial and banking institutions, healthcare providers, and even electrical providers. This is this has kind of been everywhere from what we've seen. And it's, it's caused a ton of pain, obviously, with, uh, with clients and then with uh, MSPs. I mean, this has been a frantic week for a lot of folks. Um, even if a, 
a lot of MSPs who have migrated the majority of their clients and have those handful of servers that are still out there. Um, another question that comes up, post-exploitation activity, what were these guys trying to do? There's a lot of questions around this in terms of um, uh, people have found web shells. Is there any other activity? We've seen Microsoft reference some other attack tools, uh, uh, proc dump being one of them, a couple of uh, uh, exploitation uh, frameworks being dropped in some cases. Have you guys seen those things? Any, any other um, indication of further activity uh, that you could share? We haven't ourselves personally been able to dive into the whole post-exploitation or what the attackers have been doing next. Uh, truthfully, we just focus and kind of zoom in on like, hey, it's bad. We know it's bad. We got to get it out of there. Uh, but from the other research, from the threat intelligence in the community, we are seeing those proc dump instances where it'll try and grab credentials or hashes out of memory. Um, we're seeing kind of the utility of the net.exe or the Windows command line tool, some living off the land binary to add and remove administrators or some power exploit tools or power cat to be able to kind of get connections back and forth. We're seeing reverse shells through PowerShell. There's certainly been more to this, but we don't exactly know where is it going to go next. If they have command and control, they have remote access RCE with this web shell. Is that going to mean ransomware? Is that going to mean data exfiltration? Is that going to mean cryptocurrency mining? Uh, we aren't quite sure yet, but we're still in the fight. So. Absolutely. Um, well, John, thank you so much for, for joining in. Um, you guys are going to be going over a ton of what you found in much further detail today at 1 p.m. Uh, for your webinar. We'll drop a link in to, for people to register. Thank you so much for taking the time. And thank you so much for you and everybody else at Huntress for what you guys do. We super appreciate it. Thanks so much, Jonathan.